Uh, Thank you. Thanks, Samari. Um, so this is some work with, uh, from Berkeley. I am a grad student um, advised by Mark Jordan. And this is uh, a work with uh, another student, Chiang Cheng, a postdoc, Aditya, and Martin and Mike. So it's going to be about a, analyzing the asymptotic behavior of a certain class of uh, regularizers in semi-supervised learning that we call p -Laplacians. So just a quick introduction to semi-supervised learning. We get data that is both, some of them are labeled. So we have an object that's, a, a label is associated to each object, plus or minus one, for example, in this setting. And we get a small portion of the data that is labeled and the majority of is unlabeled. And we would like to use both types of the data to make better inferences. For example, using both these types of data, we can um, output a decision boundary that separates the positive class from the negative class. So in this specific setting of our paper, we study this uh, problem on a graph. So we have a graph G. We denote its vertices by x's. And each edge has a non-negative weight, w. So there is an underlying function f star that takes uh, real values on each vertex. And we get to observe a handful of um, the values of x on a handful of vertices. And the objective will be based on the knowledge of the values on these vertices and the topology of the graph. We'd like to infer the value uh, that is taken by this function f star on the remaining vertices. Of course, this problem is ill-posed if you don't assume anything about f star. So we're going to have to assume some smoothness condition. For example, f could be smooth on regions of high density of the graph. So this problem has been studied and tackled algorithmically uh, 15 years ago. Um, and the most simple thing you can imagine is just to use a penalization that uh, penalizes the Laplacian form of the graph. So you minimize over all functions f, over all labelings, the Laplacian, the quadratic form that is given by the Laplacian subject to the measurement constraint. Um, there is an issue with this, uh, with this estimator is that the solution is typically badly behaved. And this is an illustration of that. So here we have a graph that is on two dimensions. So all these blue points form the vertices of the graph in two dimensions. And we labeled one vertex plus one here, one vertex minus one, and we made the inference. And this is the plot that we get. So that function is constant everywhere and has sharp spikes on the, in the, on the vertices where we observe uh, values. So last year here, in the same conference, uh, this method was proposed. And instead of minimizing the quadratic form that is given by the Laplacian, we just minimize the maximal discrepancy of the function along every edge, subjects, of course, to the uh, measurements constraints. OK, and if I run this on the, uh, the previous example, I get something that is much more sensible. So last year, they proposed a fast algorithm for solving this optimization problem. And the statistical question of like what are the statistical properties of this estimator are still open. And this is our main motivation for studying this problem. So we'll try to make a first step towards that. So I'm going to introduce a general framework that is called p Laplacians, And I'm going to go back to the Laplacian regularization. But instead, I'm going to put a power p here instead of 2. And I'm going to consider minimizing this form under the measurements constraints. So if we take p, p equals 2, we get, of course, heat diffusion, which is the first attempt. And we, if we take the limit p uh, to infinity, we get the, the, second, uh, the second estimator that I presented. And I'm going to consider a flowing generative model for the, for the problem, for the graph. I'm going to consider a geometric generating model. Uh, I'm going to consider a, uh, mu, which is a probability density on, with respect to the Lebesgue measure on 0, 1 in d dimensions, a bandwidth and a function, decreasing function. It's a link function. And so the x's are drawn uniformly from the measure mu. And the weights, wij, is just the, the function phi applied to the distance between every pair of points x i x j divided by a certain bandwidth h. So this, this generates a sequence of graphs that is indexed by the number of vertices and the bandwidth. And we're going to study the behavior of this p Laplacian minimizer in the limits where the graph size grows to infinity and the, band limit, the bandwidth shrinks to zero, while the number of observations, the number of vertices where I get to observe things, is fixed. So this is in the this this limit is in the uh, the the infinite unlabeled data limit 
So the first main result is that in this limit, and for every even p and fixed function f, this discrete p Laplacian converges to this functional, that is the integral of the norm of the gradient raised to the power p. And from there, we can, um, we can uh, deduce a couple of observations that if p is smaller than the dimension d, then I can tell you that the solution is degenerate. And this is applied by a counterexample. I can construct a sequence of functions f indexed by some epsilon, such that when epsilon goes to zero, this functional will go to zero, since it is possible, positive everywhere, so that, that's the global minimum, and that this sequence of functions is highly spiky. So that illustrates the problem that I've shown uh, in the previous slide. The second conclusion is that when p is greater than d plus one, I can tell you that the solution is smooth, and this relies on a certain theorem called the Sobolev embedding theorem from functional analysis. So I'm going to consider again this optimization problem that I get in the limits. And the second theorem just tells you that um, if, writing the optimality con if I write the optimality conditions of this uh, optimization problem, I get the following PDE. So every minimizer f has to satisfy the following PDE. So let me walk you through this. So this first two terms are just the heat diffusion part of the equation. And there is this nonlinear term that is called the, Pila the infinity Laplacian operator from PDE theory. So if I take p equals 2, this disappears, and I just recover the heat diffusion equation. If I take p to infinity, then these two terms disappear, and I just get delta infinity of f equals 0. So this is an interpolation between the solution, uh, uh, the heat diffusion solution and the Lex minimization solution in the limit. They can be interpreted in terms of this uh, PDE. So this is what I said. Um, so we can interpret basically this delta infinity as the second derivative of the of the function in the direction of its gradient. And it's there is a lot of study uh, in particular about delta infinity equals zero in PDE theory. And I should say that there is a game theoretic interpretation that is due to Yuval Perez and other fellow probabilists. Um, so the consequences, again, just to highlight, say, is that there is a sharp dichotomy between p smaller than the dimension and p greater than the dimension plus 1. And the first bullet is to say that for p smaller than the dimension and for p equals to infinity, these two estimators cannot possibly be statistically optimal because on one hand, for p smaller than the dimension, the solution is, not, is discontinuous. And in the limit p equals infinity, you completely ignore the data generating density. So this is, can be viewed from here. When p goes to infinity, this term disappears, and this term is the only one that encapsulates this data generating density, so you forget about it. So you don't use anything about the unlabeled data that you got. So one conclusion that we can draw possibly is that d plus 1 seems to be a prudent choice, because it's it just trades off optimally between smoothness and the sensitivity, sensitivity to in the underlying data generating distribution. So I'm going to end up with some open problems that are raised by our uh, work. So the model selection problem first is that D is unknown in practice, so is there a data-driven way to of choosing P? Uh, the algorithmic question, of course, is there a fast solver for deep P Laplacian problem? So we think that a Newton method could solve the problem by because it requires repeated calls to Laplacian solvers, but we didn't do the overall running time analysis, so that could be a, an interesting thing. Um, there's an empirical process theory question is that our theorems hold for fixed Fs, and our theorems do not imply the convergence of the sequence of estimators. So can we prove a uniform convergence result on some class of functions? That could be an interesting question. And again, the asymptotic question when n, the number of unlabeled points, and the, label, the number of labeled points grow relatively at a certain rate to infinity. That's something that we can um, tackle. And at the end, the last question is that well, if p equals d plus 1, this choice is minimax optimal over some class of problems. And uh, yeah, thank you. That's, that's going to be all. <laughs>